Hey, welcome back. My name is Al, and today we're going to block out a character, and this character is Krusty the Clown. So before we get there, please let me know in the comments below. Is this helpful? Is this not helpful? I love getting your feedback. Love to hear your thoughts on this. What would be helpful to you? Let's do it. Okay, so I've had many requests based on my previous video, making a base mesh using Z-Spheres. So this is not Z-Spheres, but this is another approach. Now, this is very, very simple, and that's why I sped up this section so greatly, so much, um, because it's easy in concept, and I'll show you kind of the pros and cons. We're gonna talk about why this approach is really, really solid, and why you might use this rather than just sculpting from a sphere, things like that. With this approach, in a nutshell, all you're doing is creating your entire character out of primitive shapes. So as you can see, I've already dropped in the sphere. I've duplicated the sphere for the body, and then I duplicated the arms. The arms are literally just stretch spheres, right? Nothing crazy there. I added this bow tie and I used clip curve to kind of get that shape in there because I know I'll do some sculpting on it later. And then I knew, I knew, 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 knew that the mouth was going to be, or at least the most difficult part of this guy. So I really wanted to get some of that sculpting in there to get that base mouth shape in there because there isn't really a good primitive shape as a whole. Now, really, if I were smart about this, I probably should have broke the mouth into several different spheres or several different shapes, but you know, I wasn't smart about it, but that's okay. So you can go to your subtool palette, insert your spheres, your cubes, whatever you want to insert, or you can just use insert mesh brushes. And I do a little bit of both in this approach. So either way, all we're doing is getting these individual subtools as parts. Now, some people will not do individual subtools, at this point in my life, I like individual subtools, but some people will just do it all one tool and just different poly groups. That works just fine too. This is really, really great to nail down proportions. Kind of like we talked about with Z spheres. This is super helpful because if this were all connected, right? If I started from a sphere and pulled out these arms and the arms happen to be too short, it's a pain in the butt to adjust that. But since everything is its own object, I can come in, push, pull, adjust, make it closer to the concept. So you can see I'm doing Krusty the Clown a minute or two ago. I moved my reference image right in the middle of the screen. That way I was literally just checking proportions there. It's a really rough way to do it, but it works out. I knew that, oh, hey, the head needs to be taller. This is the process that I use for this entire character. It's very important not to rush this stage, but to really um, take as long as you need just to nail it. I wanted to pose my character and we did this symmetrically first. That would be easiest. And you can see on the hand here that I just did the left hand or his right, whatever. But then in my subtool palette, I go to geometry. I can mirror and weld to the other side. So that's what I'm doing there. So sometimes I'll work in symmetry. Sometimes I'll just do one side and then mirror over. It doesn't really matter, but breaking it up into pieces, incredibly helpful. Great person to follow who does this all the time, Shane Olson, incredible artist. I look up to him a lot, probably one of my favorite Z brushers. And honestly, I don't use this approach as much as I should. I think most times this approach is slower. I feel like it's better. So I think it's much faster just hopping in there, push and pull and stretching with Sculptures Pro, just stretching the, the sphere or whatever you're making, right? To get that shape out. Um, so if I'm just kind of concepting, if I need fast, I won't use this approach. But if I need accurate, then this is the approach for me. Uh, this or these spheres. Honestly, I feel like this gives you more accurate results. You have a, a base mesh that is the more accurately represents your reference because when you hit Z-spheres, no matter how good they are, there's still some initial sculpting that you have to do. And this isn't done, right? I will have to go through and sculpt all of this, but using these primitives, it looks Krusty the Clown, more or less. If this were Z-spheres, it would look much different. Uh, the forms, the, you know, the main volume would still be there. But if you haven't tried this approach, definitely take a look. I know this is a very kind of cool quick introduction to this method but if you've never used it same thing in blender you can do this different shapes to block out your entire character for this one i went ahead and grabbed the colors i just thought it'd be a more appealing video instead of just a clay sculpt so i kind of fumble around in this a lot just with the colors because when i z remesh it would uh, sometimes change my colors and i guess i didn't know what i was doing that's okay 
So you can see here, I am actually doing a little bit of sculpting, very, very quick on the tie to make it a little bit more like a tie. It goes right there, right? I put that uh, placeholder tie exactly where I wanted it, more or less, and then I can just go in and do my sculpting. We can see we're nearing the end of this kind of blockout stage for this character. I mean, everything's there. I guess the top of the hair, I do that at a later time because I guess I forgot it. Hair, mouth, arms, body, everything is pretty much there. I still need the collar. Uh, what else do I need? There's several adjustments that I need to make and I'm not quite done blocking this out. And I took a lot of time trying to nail this down, even right here at the end of this video. This is not complete. There's still some block out things I need. Fingers aren't great. I would need to push and pull this a little bit better, change some things up. But to block out a character, if you've never done it this way, it feels very foreign to do it this way. I promise you. But it's a really cool approach, and I know it's nothing new. People have been doing this for years. You know, if you were a sketch artist, you break everything up into primitives, and we are basically doing the same thing here except in 3D. I hope this was helpful to you. So if you felt like I earned it, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time.